Welcome to the Whole Athlete Podcast, where we focus on discussing topics to help you become a fat burner, optimize health, and improve performance in life and sports. Transform the whole you from the inside out with the holistic method. Let's dive in. Here's your host, Debbie Potts. Hey, everybody, it's Debbie Potts with an exciting new episode of the Whole Athlete Podcast with a local favorite here, Angela Pfeiffer, the gut guru. Thanks for coming on today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Well, I've been trying for a long time to get you on the podcast because you're so busy speaking and presenting and coaching. And tell everyone a little bit about your story and your why. Yeah, absolutely. So I am a functional medicine nutritionist. I've been in practice for about 13 years. Uh, graduated from last year. Um, seems like an eon ago. <laughs> um, I have been focusing on functional gut disorders uh, since the beginning. And maybe about five or six years ago, it just morphed over into uh, focusing on SIBO almost solely. Um, and I say solely, you know, anyone that has SIBO, it's a secondary condition. It's something that comes along with a lot of other stuff usually. And so there's, it's a very complex presentation. Um, so there's a lot to work through and handholding with the patient. There's a lot to really figure out is what is driving this condition to even be there, um, how we're going to address it step by step. So it's a lot of work on both sides with the patient. Um, but I just love it. Um, it's a, it's a population that really needs more support and, um, often daily support for what they're having to deal with. So I've, uh, Oh gosh, I've, uh, I think I live and breathe work at this point. <laughs> this is my life. Yeah, me too. But like Saturday, great. I don't have any calls. I can work all day. Uh, I know, not not good work life balance. Um, but um, but you love what you do. Is I love what I do. Right. I mean, that's Absolutely. what I say. Yeah, I love what I do. Um, I, I love being able to help people and really um, uh, just see the differences you know that we can make for people. Mm -hmm. um, so I love doing that. Um, and then oh gosh, uh, two years ago, I opened up a bone broth company. Um, and so we launched that and, um, I just saw a need for it in terms of, uh, really knowing where your food comes from, really knowing where we source our bones, uh, making amazing, delicious bone broth. But then also for my patient load, more on the functional med um, functional gut presentation side in terms of uh, those chronic symptoms, mm -hmm. I made sure that it was allergen free, gluten free, and even low FODMAP free, which means that there's no garlic or onion in it which can sometimes be a little bit triggering. They're lovely and delicious and we love them, but for a lot of people, they're, they're a bit triggering. And so if we think about people with, you know, any kind of inflammatory bowel disease or even, you know, celiac, um, think, of, think about people with IBS or SIBO, mm -hmm. and which is small intestinal bowel overgrowth. Um, that's what I have a, a large focus on in my practice. Um, those people get a bit set off by garlic and onion. So you have this beautiful healing supportive broth that you can use, but you can't use it because of the ingredients. You can't just go to the store and get something off the shelf. So it's great to be able to make this so people could just order it right into their home and be able to use it and, and get that healing benefit. And at my studio in Bellevue Fitness for we started yeah. selling it. I got a freezer last year from you and I think it's been a year or more now that we've been selling it in the studio because as I'm expanding from just being a fitness studio with personal training that now I'm trying to be the holistic method and kind of go with what we talk about in the whole athlete podcast that you really need to transform from the inside out working at a cellular level. And so, you know, adding the bone broth just seemed like the next step. And now we're just starting our new nutritional therapy program with the infrared sauna. So just, yeah. it overlaps. And it's like you said, it's not just, you know, you've got stuff is from something else. And, you know, it's like me talking about adrenal issues are really coming from your HPA access and how all the side effects from that is this whole domino effect. So if we can just at least have a healing broth every day mm -hmm. and have that, I think it's so beneficial, even if you aren't able to do everything else, but Let's kind of dive into what is the bone broth. And I have mine defrosting here. I put in a bowl, but we have this chicken or beef and yeah. it's organic. And I just, you know, take it out of the freezer and put it in my bowl so it doesn't yes. get all over the fridge. Yes. <laughs> I know the bags are, the bags are lovely, um, but in shipping sometimes they get a little bit of a sharp edge on them. And so always defrost in a bowl, always defrost yeah. in a bowl. That's I tell everyone that. Absolutely. But I love that you just showed that because I think first and foremost, we actually sell real broth. Yeah. So there's a lot of bone broths in the market that are powders and they're not broth. They never were. They're basically gelatin powder that's been heated to a really high heat. Oops. 
Ah. <laughs> drop down, drop down. <laughs> um, if they've been heated to a really high heat, so you, you take gelatin. Um, it can be taken from hide, from um, uh, bones, and also from hooves. And you heat it to a really high, I know, you heat it to a really high heat. <laughs> so gross. Break the bonds. And then when you bring it back down, when you add that bra, the, the powder, pardon me, to a, uh, to water, it doesn't form a gel like gelatin. Those bonds have been broken. And so they're selling that as bone broth, but it was never bone broth ever, 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 mm -hmm. never. It wasn't like we took that beautiful bag and dehydrated it down and giving you a powder that reconstitutes. That's an, it was never bone broth. So it's nice. Just first and foremost, it's a whole food. You got a whole food in your hands and you're, you get to actually make it, to heat it up, you sip it, it's, it's amazing. Um, I've had some people add you know, a few scoops to, um, few, um, as it, it gels when you defrost it in the fridge, so you can just add a couple of scoops to a smoothie in the background or they're, you know, for, the, for the summer, or they're just sipping it um, heated, which is lovely, or putting it into the background of a soup. So there's a lot of great ways that you can use it. So let's talk about the benefits. So like, why do we yeah. need bone broth? And if, you know, what's in it that's so powerful and how, what does it do for us? Cause it's all over all these blogs yeah. and newsletters and stuff in the stores. Bone broth is becoming more popular. Yeah. And collagen. So let's kind of yeah. talk about that and how it helps for athletes of all levels, but just healing, repair, and recovery. Healing and repair. I mean, if we just talk about that, I think the, the trickle effect that um, uh, plays out into all these different um, avenues in terms of athlete or people trying to heal their gut or just trying to get better protein status. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you, you named it. It's the collagen within the, the, the bone broth that actually makes it shine. All of the protein present is from collagen. And basically the bones are these collagen matrices. Everything thinks about bone as being really high in just, you know, calcium. It must just be calcium and then it like disintegrates into a powder calcium that people can take. But it's actually a protein matrix and it's collagen that's actually linking up all the bone. Oh. So um, when we simmer that for a long period of time, we actually draw that collagen out into the liquid and that's where we get our bone broth. Um, so collagen is, is really uh, the, the liquid gold, as we say, within uh, bone broth. Um, so it's high in uh, glycine, and it's really glycine that's the main focus. There's a couple other amino acids, like pro proline, hydro hydroxyproline, and arginine, which are lovely, but really it's glycine that's probably the most um, influential of those amino acids. So when we start to look at that, your body needs about 10 grams a day for normal physiological function. Of collagen. Um, the body only makes about three grams a day from serine. It's another amino acid that we take in pretty readily in our diet. So glycine is something that we call a semi-essential amino acid. So to be able to take in something like uh, a bone broth and get a, your higher dose of glycine from it, it's, it's quite um, uh, well absorbed. Um, you get really better, uh, uh, really great protein status and absorption with it. Um, and so if there's any kind of, you know, um, overtraining with athletes. Um, if somebody has rheumatoid arthritis or leaky gut or wound healing or something, even like ulcerative colitis, they have heightened needs for glycine above and beyond that 10 grams a day. So, so for anybody, need, bone broth would be a really great way of getting that in. So just to re review, you're saying you need 10 grams of glycine per day yep. for just general recovery for your joints and your gut and yes. skin and hair and everything. Yep. And wow. then if you do overtraining or if you have some sort of uh, demand like a wound healing. So there have been some great studies on ulcerative colitis where people actually have open wounds in their colon uh, where they're ulcers and they've actually used um, glycine specifically to heal up those wounds. So not only is it directly improving wounds and wound healing, um, and that turnover of the cells, you get better, you know, how safe is it? You know, at that point, you're yeah. using it for somebody that has a, has a, a wound in their gut. So um, it's incredibly safe. Um, but at that point, when, when anyone has, you know, again, even with um, athletes, um, you know, working out a lot, they, they have heightened needs for their protein needs and not, not crazy amounts. I don't think people need to walk around, uh, you know, pounding protein shakes all day long. We definitely can <clears throat> excuse me, we can definitely look at our diet and get everything that we need from our diet and also look for other whole food sources like bone broth to help support the system versus going to a supplement. Supplements should supplement a healthy, great variety, um, well-absorbed diet, right? That's key word though, is supplement uh, yeah. your whole foods diet that you don't want to be taking all this processed foods and your powders. Cause I know a lot of people and athletes and and people I know, they do a lot of those recovery mm -hmm. drinks and shakes. And I always feel like, you know, whole food is so much, 
seems like it's just better for you because it's not so processed. Even yeah. if it has 12 grams, 24 grams of protein in the shake packet, yeah. that I can get, you know, you're saying on your label, it says 12 grams of quality protein, probably right. more usable, right? Right. It, right. That's in one cup. Right. And one gram of carbs and zero fat, but just 12 grams of quality protein that your body will probably just soak right up. Right. Really, really well absorbed. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what we love. I mean, even, you know, for everybody that I work with, if they are doing any kind of added, added protein and they come to me, we always have to take a look because most of the protein powders are like the, the, the kitchen sink in terms of what's added to them. It's crazy. So if somebody wants just a protein powder to supplement their diet because maybe they don't like animal protein. Maybe they don't do as well with it. Like we really have to get something that's straight protein. So they're not taking in these massive amounts of added supplements that they're not really watching because you really can't overdo. So what, I just thought of something, because I know a lot of people as they work more being a nutritional therapy practitioner there now that there's not a lot of people that have the right stomach acidity to break down all the protein they're mm -hmm. eating. So their stomach acid is supposed to be 1.5 to 3.0 pH scale. And then if you're, most people are the wrong acidity, so they're not able to digest protein. So does this help having more of a liquid form? You don't have to do all the work in, of your stomach and digestive system to yeah digest and it break down those proteins into amino acids when it's yeah. like I would look I would say in the in the interim while uh trying to get protein status up and crop nutrition uh, nutrient status up looking at something that's more powdered looking at something not in not in the the bone broth proteins but like a you know just a powdered protein or looking at bone broth would be absolutely lovely to help bring those up. But if somebody is not producing enough stomach acids, like we need to get to the root of what is Why? happening. Are they eating too fast yeah. and not paying attention to their food? Are they more in a sympathetic dominance? Are their meals <laughs> just in a mess? They're not sleeping well. That uh, sounds like everybody I work I know, with. seriously. <laughs> Myself. So I just want to say that too, because um, it's, it's lovely to be able to have some tools, but then really getting at the root of what's happening because yeah. you can't live on a liquid food diet for ever. In no. a healthy way. Yeah, in a well, healthy way. But this is great for, um, honestly, for um, uh, people um, more in the elderly um, um, age bracket because just naturally over, you know, the lifetime, we start to lose a little bit of uh, prowess, shall we say, in terms of stomach acid production and digestive enzyme production. So this is absolutely wonderful for anybody that I would say above 60, 65 not elderly at that point, not elderly, of course, until 85, but yeah. anybody that's getting on um, within that bracket, I think would be lovely to bring that in because it's really great for protein status. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what, you know, we'll get into the bone broth fast and the reset, mm -hmm. but that's kind of what I'm changing my 21 day yeah. sugar detox I used to do for years. And now do nutritional therapy learning from you is making a phase one, I call it a five day detox for your more focus on liver detox and resetting. And then phase two is a 21 day digestive reset repair program. And phase three is kind of, all right, let's transition to real life because now yep. I want you to eat more whole foods. Yep. That's what my new 30 day total transformation program is to focus on those phases. Cause I think so many people don't they do these different 30 day programs and yeah. all these other transformation stuff, but no one's working on is your digestive system working in the liver mm -hmm. and as well as stress and the sleep and all that. Like we talk about the holistic method yeah. that you have to have all of it going on. Yes. Is a, you know, working on doing a bone broth, talk about, you know, what you have, we have done in my studio. And when I do my five day liver detox, I'm having people do the broth fast for yeah. Even, one day is good. So let's kind of dive into what that is good for and why we should do it and when. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'd say uh, before anyone steps into a fast, we just need to make sure that they're ready to do a fast. You know, the, the um, person that's, again, flying with their hair on fire, working a ton and just decides they're going to do a fast on Saturday but keep working all day isn't going to get the benefits of doing any fast, whether a water fast, bone broth fast, or any kind of fast. And, you know, fasting really should have its own little – uh, world, I think, in terms of setting the tone mm -hmm. as you're getting there. I mean, it is a day for reflection. It is a day for uh, connecting with nature. It's a day for connecting with yourself and really relaxing things. And I would say almost, um, well, no, I wouldn't say almost. I would say everyone should be just completely off of any electronics on a day like that. It really, to get the full benefits of it, yeah. right? Because we can't force it. 
And that's the same thing. Like everybody always wants to do a, like a quick cleanse or 30 day bam. And they're like, okay, I fixed it. Now I can get back to my crazy life and none of that stuff's going to bug me anymore. And it's like, there's, you know, we want to learn and experience and say, what did you learn from that? What did you like from that 30 days? And how can we carry that forward? So when we look at any kind of fast, I'd say that, uh, you know, depending on the person, they might need a couple of weeks of kind of preparatory work to really make sure the system is stable enough to get into a fast. Yeah. Um, but for the, for the, um, for fasting, I really enjoy bone broth as a fast because detox is protein driven. And I think for a lot of people, we need a little bit added support on those days versus just doing a water fast. I think it's a, it can be a little bit too, uh, impactful in a negative way for people just to kind of stop everything. They might work into a water fast later, but a bone broth fast would be a more gentle way of getting there and still maintain some protein status so they can keep driving that detox um, forward because we don't want any anything to dump quickly. Yes, and that's what we always make sure in nutritional therapy that you work on that all elimination pathways are working in a yeah. detoxification program. And most people have a congested liver and then, you know, I just got a little rebounder trampoline to have in our program. Oh, so we love it. Can bounce and help their lymphatic system, then go in their infrared sauna and then bounce again and have some tea, some herbal nice. tea. And have oh, their I love it. I love it. I am yeah. amazed how often when I say, Hey, do you have a rebounder at home? And they say, what is that? I'm like that little round trampoline. Oh my gosh, I do. Like been, so many people, you know, either, um, have that from them or they, you know, yeah. someone has one in the garage home. sitting yeah. there getting dusty. Yes. Or their aunt has it. I'm like, grab it, grab it. You're going to need that. Well, I just heard someone say, cause I'm going to my mastermind retreat this weekend and there's Ursa a fitness convention going on in San Diego, the same place. And someone was talking about how they're doing a trampoline something booth that there's doing trampoline exercise. So it must be coming back in style doing trampoline, but we bought it or I bought it just to add into the whole program of detoxification yeah. lymphatic system and to have people just bounce on it. And sadly the box that I bought the trampoline that the box came in has this girl doing this like karate chop <laughs> thing. Like that's <laughs> not, probably what you do on these little rebounders. So oh, that's really funny. you just kind of bounce on it and help. But I think, going back to doing a detox, a cleanse, doing the broth. And it's kind of what I call the holistic method as we always talk about is, are you getting, you know, sleep a lot that week? Take, you know, walk in your bare feet, go outside on the grass mm -hmm. and just really or walk in a crib. Unplug. Yeah. unplug. yeah. It's a hard part. It Which, is. It is. It really is the hard part. Unplugging. Um, I actually went to a conference in uh, California a couple of years back and I had left my phone in the Uber uh, <laughs> and I couldn't get, I was there for I, four or five days. And of course, you know, freaking out the first five minutes and then, uh, okay, no, I, I freaked out the first day and a half because I want to be able to get back with my patients and you know, all of that. And then it was, it was like the best thing that happened to me. Like I swear by the time I came back, even though I was still going to the conference and doing everything, I wasn't checking my phone every two yeah. seconds. And it's amazing the like, we're just on, we're on all the time. And we, it's just our new norm, unfortunately, which is, well, I know it is. And I this different subject than the bone broth, but just the, you know, talk about detoxification and a cleanse. It is your lifestyle as well as what you're putting in. Mm -hmm. And so I just think of it, you know, that internal housekeeping, we need to improve from what, by what we're eating and drinking or yeah. not doing yes. nutritionally, but also your environment. So yes. In my new sunlight and infrared sauna we just added, and we're demoing this week, it's amazing on the board that they have in there. You can go onto Facebook and Twitter and all these apps like, no, no one's allowed to use your Facebook on my <laughs> sunlight sauna. And, uh, you know, just to have the infrared treatment, I'm going to make a little basket saying, put your phone here, turn it yeah. on airplane mode and turn oh. off the cellular data and... It, you'll be fine. It's one hour of your day. You Absolutely. It's okay. Absolutely. You're Absolutely. Gonna... Yeah. I, I would collect the phones at your front door. Yeah. <laughs> Not too clear. I know. I love, I love it. So leaky gut, we've talked about a podcast we did about a year ago with you, but talk about more the leaky gut and how the symptoms and, and how it helps with the broth. Cause your bone broth for leaky gut, you're saying to have, um, let's go over this. So sip a steaming mug in the morning and replace dinner with two mugs of delicious bone broth. I like to call it healing broth because it yeah. just sounds sucking on bones, but I like the healing broth and then to increase your calories at dinner time. If you need to, you can add some chicken fat. How do you call it? Schmaltz? 
Yep, schmaltz. Okay. Yep. And broth in a blender and sip. So yeah, if it, you, actually, it actually thickens it up. It, it blends in quite well. Yeah. So that's if you're doing a bone broth. If you want for daily use, just for healing, you're saying sip one to two steaming mugs a day as you would instead of coffee yep. or tea. Yep. And then the detox or detox bone broth for weight loss is having days one to three, six steaming mugs of bone broth and 10 glasses of water a day. Mm -hmm. And then day four to six, four steaming mugs of bone broth and vegetables. Now, is that liquid or you solid vegetables? Like Be solid vegetables. You don't have to blend that. Yeah. Okay. And then add probiotic foods into that as kimchi, sauerkraut, water, mm -hmm. kefir, and then 10 glasses of water. And then day seven to nine, add fish, seafood, poultry, coconut oil, olive oil. So you're just kind of talk yeah. about leaky gut and both the weight loss protocols you have. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it's just a real, it's a regroup. And again, making sure people are ready to get to that point, but it's a, it's a regroup and yet still going to keep them satiated and it's going to be enough protein that they're going to get good absorption and be able to continue to drive detox forward. And really that's what we're doing with it. Um, it is really wonderful to have a regroup with all of the crazy things people eat on a daily basis and don't really think about. I mean, anytime I have somebody do a diet diary, it's, um, you know, oh, this wasn't my normal. Everybody <laughs> says that. Everybody says that. Yes. I'm like, yes, it is. It is. It's, it's normal. <laughs> we have an ideal on how we'd like to eat. And we think that that's what we do more often than not. But when we write it down, we realize that's not true. So to be able to have a break from that, to be able to have a break from the, the nightly wine that's coming in or, you know, the, the, um, you know, uh, frappuccino that's coming in every other day. We need to have a break from those to have a reset and a regroup. And that's, you know, probably one of the best um, hallmark improvements that people see as they go on any kind of a regroup um, plan like this. Um, I like this as a transition because um, almost across the board, I never hear that people are hungry. They're able to um, continue it. They like it. They look forward to you know, sipping the broth, it actually has them feeling satiated because it's not a cold shake like a lot of the elimination diets would have. You know, they have a lot of the, the protein medical food shakes. So it's something that's a little bit more um, steaming. They can connect with it. It's a bit nourishing. Um, and so I find really fantastic compliance with this across the board. And then there's this beautiful reset on the other side. And so then we get to say, okay, what, what of your old life <laughs> do you want to bring back in? What can we set aside? Um, and it's a great time as a practitioner to be able to start talking about vices and, and you know, what the next steps are. Um, you know, and have the conversation on whether a whole bottle of wine every night is okay. <laughs> you know, majority of people do that. It's amazing how many people have addicted to a glass of wine at night to relax. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And they come to you with really bad joint pain and they come to you with, um, you know, something like psoriasis, something, yeah. something like you just know is connected so much to the gut, their liver enzymes are up and yet they don't want to give it up. That's their thing and it's healthy for them. So it's, it's, a, it's a good window to kind of talk through. Um, I'd say in terms of joint pain and helping things reset, it's going to take a good two weeks and sometimes even three weeks to see those, um, some of those markers really start to reset a bit. Um, so oftentimes as people go through this, I'm not saying I would continue this week after week after week, but yeah. coming off of gluten, coming off of dairy, doing any kind of work around that, it does take three to four weeks. Um, sometimes to really feel um, a reset when the system is, is um, very much lit up systemically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do in April at my studio is start that, you know, do the, the broth like you suggest, mm -hmm. day one through five, then add in food, but still the whole 30 days, take yeah. out gluten and grains and corn, soy, peanuts, and some people need to even remove eggs. And you just, you know, just stick with something for 30 days so you can see a change. But so many people, when they do it on their own, yeah it's one or two days and they slip off and not to have wine every day or, you know, to take a, how, how not to have alcohol for the whole month is yes. hard yeah. for people. So I think doing a, a program with a group is so much more effective than on your own, or at least get your spouse or housemates to join you. Because I know doing the five day detox, we're doing the first week of April at my studio. And I know I do better if my husband's doing it because if I right. come home, for, I can be good and, all day and not really think about food and then having my the broth it is really filling i add some extra spices to it i even added some um, kelp flakes and i love it american just added some vegetable broth to it too and just yeah it's so filling because you get psycho so psychological that you need to eat but then i have a cup I'm like you know what i have no appetite and right 
amazing because sometimes I'll eat food and like, okay, I could eat that whole bag or I can eat all of that. But yeah. this actually not selling it or just saying, honestly, you are selling it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm selling it, but it's honest truth that it yeah. fills me up. And that's yeah. a lot of things don't because I, yes. like, I eat and carbs. That's what I love. Honestly, that's what I love about it. Like everybody yeah. has a really good experience and sticks with it because they feel it's satiating and it is, it's pro I mean, it's the protein in it. But then I also think if we were doing this in a powder protein, people I think get sick of it very quickly because it's another cold shake when we're used to having warm food across the day. Yeah. So it's, it's a, it's a really nice, it's a great way to connect. Um, and I'll say too, adding on to what you're saying on doing something with a group. Um, so many times I have the comments and I don't put everyone on a gluten-free diet, you know, as I say this, but so many times I have the comments like, yeah, I tried gluten-free for four to six weeks. It didn't make a difference. And I see with great respect, they try gluten-free, yeah. but they didn't do gluten-free. Like everybody, you know, they, they might try it for four days and then they ate out and then they tried it for four more days and then somebody brought them something, you know, it's yeah. really difficult to do gluten-free. It just yeah. is, it is. And so if you have something on day four, if you have something on day seven, you're not gluten-free. It takes a good 10 to 15 days to get and, and beyond to get those markers to actually leave your, leave your system. And, and so it's, fantastic to do this as a group and really have a step-by-step -step plan mm -hmm. um, and be able to stick with it and have, have, have the group think <laughs> in terms yeah. of support. It's really helpful. Well, I like to have people meet too, and it's so hard. Everyone's schedule is different, so I've never been able to figure out how to do this, but have a weekly meeting in person, but even doing it on Zoom and have a conference yeah. call. But I think exactly having accountability when you do something is really big and to mm -hmm. share those experiences. And a lot of people, when you start adding food in, they're so confused. What can I eat? I don't know what to eat, and I don't know. I'm like, it's not that difficult. Yeah. <laughs> Pick vegetables and a protein source and have some healthy fats with it. Yes. But, that's but it's, so it's having the time to cook it. I think that's the that's the piece of it. Um, I really like to give people uh, recipes that they can make that will go for three or four meals. Yes, and so it can be super helpful. Just just from that perspective, yeah. cooking once and eating that a few times, and then some quick things they can grab. Because I think that, I think that's where the people get really confused. They go to, they go to work. They go past the same coffee shops. They go you know past the same place they usually have lunch, and they get there and they just stand there looking and going ah. I don't, you yeah. know, if I can't choose my regular thing, I don't know what to choose. And so it can get really, awesome. yeah, for, for anyone that's kind of in it, it makes sense in terms of what we can cook, but it's difficult, I think, for the average yes. person trying to figure out where this is coming from. So, you know, I think you need to do, or maybe we do it in the future, like Leavenworth, mm -hmm. Sleeping Lady, is do a seven-day yeah. camp that you teach people, do the program, because you need to, I think, to be, like you said, relax and be in a great mm -hmm. environment. and have the, the bone broth fast a few days and then teach cooking classes and we do yoga. Then go oh, it'd be so hikes. fun. I mean, I think that'd be so nice to have a camp. I was watching a video on Amazon Prime I found on the history of fasting and it was this place, it was black and white video they're showing parts of it's, um, I think it's just called history of fasting or something, but it was 1940s, it. 50s in yeah. Germany or somewhere, but they were at this camp and they just did water and people would go there, just get, it was a fascinating documentary, but it was really interesting. If people want to learn more, you can find it at Amazon. Yeah. Prime. yeah. You can find that. But anyways, I think, um, kind of go back to the symptoms. So I always talk about finding, putting the pieces of the puzzle together as a nutritional therapist and finding the root cause. And as you're saying, leaky guts connected to everything else. So what is, kind of didn't get, kind of skipped over it. I, so many questions, but what is, what are some symptoms of leaky gut that would cause people to realize that, okay, if I have like skin disease or have yeah, things yeah. going on, I let's think, just finish yeah. with that topic. Absolutely. Um, whenever somebody has joint pain or whenever somebody has um, any kind of autoimmune condition, I start to think about leaky gut and I want to rule it out. And there are some very good studies, uh, sorry, um, very good labs that you can do um, with Cyrex labs on uh, looking at leaky gut at either array two. Um, and it's going to look for things like occludin and um, zonulin, which are produced within the gut, but if they're leaking over into the bloodstream and we're creating antibodies to them, we know that they're leaking. It's, it's leaky gut situation. So there's an actual test that you can do for this. That would be lovely to do. Um, I'd say for, you know, some people coming to me 
um, who have you know four positive SIBO tests, and it's definitely is SIBO. We've ruled everything else out. It is SIBO. That does not automatically mean that they have leaky gut. And even some people who I, I look at in terms of their symptom presentation, I'm like, oh my gosh, how could they not have leaky gut? It's not leaky gut. We test it. So I don't want to say it's that you can't really perfectly look at this in terms of symptom set, but autoimmune joint pain. I immediately think that um, if there is <clears throat> um, if there's a lot um, of really long history with antibiotics, if um, Accutane was used in the past, yeah. I start to think about leaky gut and really looking at that. And you can usually just see decade after decade where the symptoms just keep coming on, which are, you know, again, worth investigating because there's, there's, that really is a primary target. Um, if, if, if SIBO, there's things that we walk through and then we do gut healing. If leaky gut is present, that is one of our main targets to begin with. And it has to be because that is lighting everything else up. It doesn't mean that your gut is leaking like a sieve. It means that there's inflammation, those cells, there's one cell layer deep that, deep that lines your intestinal tract. And when there's inflammation, you actually can get some um, uh, movement of the gates and the integrity between those cells. And so you get larger intact amino acids strings and food particles and even you know just things that are being engulfed within um, and across that lining that shouldn't be there should be better mediation of those channels as we usually have because well, that's where our body is like yeah. this and then it gets to be space like you have supposed to have those walls yeah. against like around your castle your yeah small your digestive system but then the barrier around there gets to be gaps in between so things cut through that seep through or get cause that inflammation will cause those gaps yes exactly exactly inflammation uh, gluten will definitely cause those gaps um, with the breakdown of zonulin and uh, managing the gates um, that's been very well documented um, and that's you know those are the whatever a person is triggering to that is causing more inflammation once leaky gut is present is going to add to that. So there's a lot to get through in terms of what the triggers are. Um, I'd say two, depending on where that leaky gut is really at along the small intestine, which is not easily identified. Just, you know, saying this, if it's, if it's way up top, then you're also talking about probably someone that's going to flare almost every time they eat fats and are dumping, you know, the gallbladder is going like this and moving bile and toxins into the gut, which is one of the preferred routes of getting toxins out of um, it through our bowels. So anytime they eat, they're going to feel like they, that whole area just gets lit up, that they don't feel well. Um, and so there's a lot to really look through in terms of, of leaky gut. And it's the same. I mean, if your mouth was inflamed and every time you ate, it got, it burned more and more and more, <laughs> right? I mean, that's what's happening with our intestines. And then people get really scared about eating. Um, and then we have this just chronic and constant feedback of inflammatory cytokines going from the gut to the brain and the brain's like, oh my gosh, the gut's inflamed, send more down. And the, the gut is like, oh my gosh, now we're more inflamed, send more messages up. And like, it's just this chronic cycle that we really have to pull people out of. So there's a, there's a lot to do if leaky gut is identified. But then you're, so you're talking about, then you get to the brain fog, depression, anxiety, all that too is related to leaky guts, that leaky yeah. brain. Yeah, we relate to mood changes too, or people that have depression. Yep, that would be beneficial at least to try to heal your gut if you have a lot of areas as well as stress issues. But yeah, if you're causing a different type of stress is coming from internally, but the gut brain connection is so fascinating too that mm -hmm. I think a lot of people forget. Like, oh, if I have this migraine all the time, or if I'm yeah. feeling really moody, and or if I'm got that other yeah. mental health issues, I think a lot of it can be improved, I would think, from yes. doing something like this. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot to look through with that. I mean, just adrenal synthetic dominance, not sleeping well, blood sugar balance is a huge one that comes with that. You need proper insulin to actually get some of the building blocks over um, to make neurotransmitters. Like you just, there's just a lot going on in terms of managing once you get brain symptoms like that, managing it, making sure that the blood brain barrier is intact, making sure that there's not um, antibody production to different things that would attack the brain as well. Um, there's not heavy metal issues present. There's, there's a lot to look at when the brain gets involved. Yeah. So much to learn and keep, there's so much information out there and just, it's all connected as you're mm -hmm. saying. Mm -hmm. And it's just, so interesting to me. And I think a lot of people, if you go back to the podcast purpose is to help people, athletes, triathletes, endurance athletes, and mm -hmm. of all levels. But I think to teach people to increase, improve performance, right. in daily life, and in the sport you're choosing, it's looking at not just eating, 
real food, but it's, are you digesting it? Are you absorbing mm -hmm. it? And how mm -hmm. healthy is your gut and your liver? Yeah, absolutely. And I would say too, for anybody that's really driven, especially if they're uh, working out a ton with goals, um, and this is what, whether that or, you know, I work with a lot of CEOs of companies and it's just type A driven mm -hmm. and their brain loves it, but their body's having a different experience. Their brain is like, yeah, I've got to focus on this all day and I'm going to get this, this, this done. It's going to be awesome. And they go to bed and they think about it and they wake up and they think about it and it's everything they're getting done and it's so awesome. And their body is just like, doesn't know which way's up. And their body is just having a whole different experience. And it's, it's over the decades that gets worse and worse and worse. And I'd yes. say, especially for women approaching anything with hormone dysregulation, because at some point your ovaries are going to hand off the baton to your adrenal glands. And if you can't do that, you, it's going to be a mess moving through that transition. I tell my clients that all the time in nutritional therapy, we learn that. And that amazes me that our medical system does not know that. And all these women going through hormonal imbalance issues and dysfunction and going through menopause, no one talks about yeah. how your adrenals take that over. And I learned that yeah. last year in nutritional therapy yeah. practitioner program. I'm like, what? How come we didn't know this yeah. information? This no, is nobody so knows huge. that. Huge. Yeah. And in addition to that, I, I can't tell you how many people I see wake up with what they think in the middle of the night is a panic attack. And their doctors are putting them on anti-anxiety med medication and all this stuff for sleep. And I'm like, it's not a panic attack. You just had an adrenaline surge because your blood sugar dipped too much yeah. and your body can't gently recover it while you sleep. So it's sending a big red flag that says, oh my God, my blood sugar's dipping so much. And there, here's an adrenaline rush, which give you, gives you a blood sugar surge and an insulin surge yeah. to wake you up so you'll go eat. Yep. And then they think it's a panic attack because they can't shut their mind off. And they've been, they, they've been looking at, I mean, you know, oh, I'm anxious. I have panic attacks. Like think about mentally what that sets up too, right? It's yes. like, it's, it's, so I'm not saying that some people aren't prone to anxiety, that some people don't have anxiety issues. Absolutely, absolutely, positively. But when you're seeing that, especially if you're waking up between maybe the midnight to 1 a.m. time with a panic attack, it's complete blood sugar dysregulation. You're barking up the wrong tree with panic attacks. We've got to look at adrenaline, blood sugar stabili stabilizing, yeah. what's triggering you, what are you driving too much, getting you out of sympathetic dominance. There's there's so much to work on there. I know. I've been doing that. They all need to read my book, Life is Not a Race, and my new Holistic Method it. Manual, because that has this, like everything I wrote about in that book. And the Holistic Method Manual has a chapter, I think you're in there, Part of it is just a chapter on each of the eight elements that you need to look at all this information everyone's sharing with us that we don't get from traditional medicine and from magazines out there. News coverage is just so much we can do that's so simple and inexpensive. Right. right. <laughs> and it's just amazing, but we're just not getting that right information out there, which is why I have the podcast that I do for yes. free and actually yes. pay to do this. Yes. <laughs> I'm so passionate about sharing this information. So with that, I thank you so much for your time. I know you're so busy with your own clients and speaking and everything you do. So tell us where to find yourself and your services and where they can get the broth. Yeah, absolutely. So they can get the broth from you. <laughs> That's your, in Bellevue. your studio if you're in Bellevue or the surrounding Seattle area. Um, and then you can also get it online. We ship right to um, the door if more um, interstates um, in other, the other 50 states. Um, so you can get it um, through gutrxbonebroth.com. And then my um, site and where to find me is siboguru.com, S-I-B-O-G-U-R-U.com. Good. And what do you have next on your plate? What are you speaking or... Um, two weeks, I'm headed off to the SIBO conference in uh, New Orleans. So yeah. that is next on my plate. And uh, the only thing I'm thinking about right now, we're doing a couple of um, spots while we're there. So we'll see. We'll see okay. how that goes. But looking forward to it. I've never been to New Orleans. Yes, I go there in June for my husband's conference. So I was just going to go work while I'm there. But it's pretty. Yeah, I love it. You, you just need to go to Bourbon Street once at night in the daytime, then you're done with it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> just for, have some nose plugs. Yes. <laughs> I, hear, I hear. I hear. I love it. Well, great. Right. Thank you. For Thank me. you. Yes. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to the Whole Athlete Podcast. If you have any questions, feedback, or topic suggestions, let us know on Facebook or at Whole Athlete Podcast. Podcast.com. You can help us continue and grow by leaving a review on iTunes. Thanks again and see you next time.